since I can't be in class tomorrow, um, or today as you're watching this, I wanted to give you a little bit of a more structured problem solving strategy for nested loops, such as those that you would use in the substring and diamond uh, practice programming activities. So let's go through the problem solving for the substring one first, um, and then you can apply that uh, to the diamond one. So in the substring one, uh, we have this word cat, and we're printing out all the possible substrings. So the output is going to be C, A, T, and then C, A, A, T, and finally C, A, T. So that's the sample output for the algorithm. The first step is to examine uh, each row and look at these adjacent elements and see what's changing from row to row as we go. So what's different about the first row with the C, the second row with the A, the third row with the T, and so on and, and so forth. This is where you have to use that computational thinking pattern matching skill um, but once we determine this, so for example, looking at this, I can see what's changing from row to row is the starting index into that string cat. So to help explain that a little bit, let me write cat over here. And the indexes of 0, 1, 2, and a length of 3. So I'm going to make a column over here labeled start index. And for each row, I'm going to capture what the start index is. So C is at index 0, A is at index 1, T is at index 2, C again is at index 0, A is at index 1, C is at index 0. The thing that is changing from row to row is often the ends up being the inner loop. So this start index ends up being the inner loop in our nested loop solution. And we'll come back to that in a second. The next thing we do is we look at the rows and we look to group elements into some sort of logical groups that have something in common. Again, this is, requires us to apply our pattern matching computational thinking skill. When I look through these various rows in the output, one thing that jumps out to me is that these first three all have something in common. And these next two have something in common. And the third one is unique. And what's in common here is the length of the substring. So I'm going to make another column for length. And I'm going to capture the length of each substring. So these three all have a length of 1. The next two have a length of 2. And this has a length of 3. The logical grouping for adjacent rows, for chunks of adjacent rows, often leads us to that's the uh, part of the outer loop of our nested loops. Um, once we have this, we're very close to writing our nested for loops. Um, so just to be clear, this is going to be our outer loop. And for each loop, we need to write down where does it start. This loop starts at 1. Where does it end? This loop ends at 3. And how much does it change by for each iteration? It changes by plus 1. So we could write that loop right now. And I would even recommend using a loop variable named length as opposed to i or j or something to provide more meaning to your code. Let's look at this column here. This one's a little bit more challenging. Uh, this is the inner loop, as I mentioned earlier. It always starts at 0. It doesn't end at any specific, consistently at any specific number. We'll have to figure that out later. But it does change by plus 1 for each iteration. So we're very close in figuring out our inner loop. When the inner loop doesn't necessarily end at the same number each time, that's indicative that what we have are what are called interdependent nested loops. And these are the more sophisticated types of nested loops where some condition of the inner loop is dependent upon a value in the outer loop. And there's a couple ways that we figure this out. What we have to look for is a mapping for the value of the outer loop variable to the um, 
ending value of the inner loop variable. So for example, when length is one, we end at two. When length is two, we end at one. When length is three, we end at zero. Okay. So there's some relationship there. And again, this is the third time we're applying our pattern matching computational skills to figure this out. Um, and so a couple different strategies here. You may able to be able to look at these mappings. Basically, we're looking for a function. We're looking for a function where we can take f of length and have some expression that when evaluated gives us the, the ending condition for our inner loop. Um, you may be able to just look at this and see the pattern and see, okay, f of one equals two, f of two equals one, f of three equals zero, what must that expression be? Um, and often that's all it takes. Um, if you can't just look at it and see that, um, what you can do is actually plot these points. So this axis is the length. I can plot the point one comma two. I can plot the point two comma one. I can plot the point three comma zero. And if I draw the resulting line that fits those points, okay, I didn't exactly do that to scale. The equation of this line, let's see, the slope is negative one. So negative length, because that's on my horizontal axis. And the intercept, the vertical intercept, is at 1, 2, 3, plus 3. So I could write this equation as 3 minus length. And in fact, if we then test against the sample data, 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0. That's the expression that defines our interdependent nested loops. So at this point, if I go and write my outer for loop that starts at one and ends at three and, it, and changes by plus one each time, and I write my inner for loop, which starts at zero and ends at three minus length, where length is the outer loop variable and changes by plus one each time, um, I'm gonna have a working substring program. And so if you haven't got the substring program working yet, this should definitely help you get that code going. More importantly, um, I want you to, on your own paper, work through this for the diamond um, and specifically focus just on the top half of the diamond. Um, just worry about making a triangle for now, but use this exact problem-solving procedure, and I think it's going to go in a much more straightforward manner.